subtle ways of letting go. Okay, so a dentist said, "I just a terrorist. A meditation retreat now as our retreat center China proves to come and give this talk this evening." The retreat finish tomorrow evening, so officiously my mind has been full of thoughts on meditation, and so I thought I'd brush on all the talk out and recycle it today. Resilience is on the right, but not just to recycle it, because. It's an interesting aspect of how to not to meditate. But just how to let go of difficulty in your life? This is the talk on the four ways of letting go. This is trends for the boosters. Teaching. The first teaching of the Buddha is part of that teaching, but also is the care that's number one. No matter whether you meditate or you don't meditate, whether you are Buddhist, a Christian, a Muslim, a Hindu, or whatever, is one of her. From time to time, to learn how to let go, because sometimes does not be able to let go, carrying around the best memory of the past, the best feelings of the present, the fear of the future, not being able to let them go, cause. Us so much pain and suffering, and not just us pain and suffering. It's how old people who have to burst up us a lot of pain and suffering. So at the very least, for the compassion of your family and the people you work with. Please train your mind to be able to let go, to be peaceful and happy. So that's one of the reasons that I decide to be happy out of compassion for all the people who have to put up with me. That's a very good reason. So you learn something. In Buddhism, call it how to let go. By learning how to let go, it doesn't mean you let go all the time and become a monk or a nun. Even if you do become a monk or a nun, you still have to work hard. You have to keep your responsibilities. You can't. Just let go all the time, but it's a very beautiful part of your repertoire. Does you know at any time in any situation, you got something to do with more of the other people can do. You just letting go and letting be. Simple things. It's always still primary. Why is it that someone hurts you, they cheat you, they let you down, they say ter- terrible thing about you, bitter? Why can't you just let this go? Because if you don't let it go, that person continue to hurt you, continue to harm you. It's a really cruel thing, isn't it? They hurt you once, and because 
You attach to it and carry it around. They hurt you again and again and again and again. Every time you think of it, they hurt you one more time. When you look at it that way, it totally unreasonable, illogical, was almost foolish thing you could ever do. It to get angry at someone who hurt you. How when they hurt you and you get angry, they hurting you try over. So someone hurt you, can't do anything about it. Let it go. It go. You let it go, and they can only over hurt you one. And then you let it go. So easy to do. When you realize how you let that thing go, not only that, sometimes we have on the fears of the futures. I don't know some of you properly. If you haven't yet, once that you go to doctor and they say you got breast cancer. You got blood test cancer. You got lung cancer. You got some sort of cancer. There's a whole variety of cancers now. Just like the whole variety of mostly when I was young, you could only guess one brand. So, this is the tourist you have their days. So, when you have any of the diseases, what do you do? You worry yourself sick. You already sick enough, and now you worry yourself sick even further. This is a total death and stupid thing to do. So. Why can't you let go of the filters? Enjoy this moment. As I said, I actually never said that this evening. It's a trend I used to say this every week in meditation. Where is your filters make? When is the only time you can do anything about your filters? Right now, this is the place you filters peace, health, and happiness is being contrasted. So every time you worry about your future, mm, what's going to happen to me? I'm going to die. You actually not letting the place you could do something. Which is right now. So if you can just make peace, be kind, be gentle. If you can let go of the future and the but, and just be now, you're gonna be a very healthy, happy, successful person. Person short of do bad thing to you, just let it go. Why should I allow those people to control my happiness? Or as one of my favorite saying goes, you know you get their calendars. You to get the calendars, we rent out of them every year. The Buddhist society makes a calendar and they try and bust some of Ajahn Brahms. Sayings on that calendar, and the one saying I like the most, w h i c h never gets on that calendar, is this one: Why see it for revenge? Because you know that karma will get the bad stars anyway. I don't know why that never gets on that calendar. It's a good one. Isn't it? You don't have t 
to do anything. Karma will shut its door. Leave it alone. You let it go. The just for it we all know is a reasonable thing to let it go. It makes a lot of sense, but you can't do it. Which is why we teach the four ways of letting go. Is this of saying let go? How do you let go? Tell me how to let go. Now the Buddha is going to tell you how to let go, with the four ways of letting go. The first way of letting go is worth starting off with an old appearance with my teacher Ajahn Chah a long time ago. We were walking back from Ambrose. And a great teacher, they always find an opportunity to sort of you know, give you some teaching. But not the teachings with so many words and peace concepts. Just simple down to earth teachings with ones you hear. You think, crazy, that really good. And you remember it, and it changes much of your life. What he did on occasions walking back, he picked up this stick, the forest all over the place, picked it up a stick, turned it around, and says, "Rama was so. It is heavy. It is heavy. Not now." Is very、really、careful. I did then throw dust too far. Wonder what is gonna burst. It's only heavy when you hold it, but if you let it go, it's got no weight at all. Rough faults, simple as unforgettable. So what heavy things? Have you got in your life right now? Trust cancer, relationship problems, money problems. Is that heavy? It's only heavy when you hold it. So why on earth can't we let it go? Why can't we throw it away? As the richest, I told on those people. Who are still worried about their families, worry about their jobs, to actually to get a stick in the forest, in the China road, and either get a pen or carve my family on the stick. Look at the stick. Does my family? And throw it as far as you possibly can, so you free for nice days. You can change that. You can bust my shop. You can, but you know my husband, my wife, my kids, my life. Throw it away because what does this? It gives you an understanding that the first way of letting go is checking things out, because you like such complicated life. You have so many things in your basket, and that means you cannot travel lightly on the journey of life. It's me, a beast bike bike. You see, on their back baskets in bed. You used to go by sparking, by by back was really small. This day they have has by back. Just wonder what they got in there. What do you actually need in there? Robbers got their computer. We didn't have computers in those days. Just go to a box. There a phone. 
if you wanna read that after that you have your own phone but you were very light in those days they get bit by spike <laughs> it made you got a bit by spice on and it's really heavy it's for us on there not just glass but rock heavy granite rock and you walk down fly with this and you just don't know how to tie it up and put it down you're gonna get very tired you're gonna get very sick and you're gonna have no happiness at all you're gonna be so rampant how every moment of your life you as hard did you feel as started in your mind why because you've been carrying too many things in the best bag around your mind so we actually looked in the best bag what can i throw away this is the first way of letting go see what you can transition see what you can throw away it's amazing you can throw away many many more things than you could the image and nothing goes wrong if you throw away on these concerns upon your filter and the bus actually nothing goes wrong that's the first big stone to get it all off your bus bag and throw away I don't know about your history has it been a good history or a bad history I haven't got a clue cause I threw my stone out a long time ago so you are free of your butt the bus is a reason it's a cell with an open door you can watch all at any time you like but a lot of times just like people who have been in prison a long time they just a bit afraid of living they've been used that prison cell so much so it's so hard to work out but once they have the courage to let go of the path just like the resonor walking out for the first time freedom ah i feel so good and so happy this big burden this big pen this big rock i let go off isn't that wonderful so see if you can look cast your butt even get a stick in the forest write my butt on it and throw it as far or even better get a rock spray pen butt on it and throw it in the river and let it sink with no trace left behind and then imagine how free you feel you can do this you can let go all their things but when we don't have the ends the courage to let go the first way of letting go with throwing things away is have someone's confines you it can be done and it's good to do a lot of times we think we certain a lot of time we think you can learn from the bad you don't learn from the bad you actually get a lot of pain from the bad you learn much more from letting go of the bad 
than you do from keeping the bud. So we just allow it to disappear and as for the future, what might happen next? At the richest people were telling me about 2012. When the world is going to end, the Tetanus fled are gonna shift. They're gonna be tsunamis. They're gonna be earthquake. So forget about having a mortgage. You don't have to pay it off in another two years. Of cow is not gonna end in two year time or whatever. Is this? You don't think about that. If first I saw in Indonesia, people were talking about it. Even Indonesia, in the island over there, I said, "Look, I volunteer my monetary and the Hubudi subsidy of Western Australia, which at its assessed against your house." I bet if the worst end, you get our monetary and the Buddhist subsidy of Western Australia assets. If it doesn't end, we get your house. No one turns me up on it. Of course, you don't. That's not much of a deal. Best people are so afraid of the future. One thing I can guarantee you about your future, you know I can read the future just like Argentina used to do. I can read it. And I'm reading the future of Australia and I tell you I won't be from. The future of Australia in uncertainty. No, that's not just a talk. That's actually so you that you cannot know what's going to happen next. Any time in your life, you don't know what's going to happen. Your life has been so surprising. It's gone direction you could never have predicted each one of you. That's just the uncertainty of our life. So let's go off the future throughout its way. So, what we are doing is we're letting go by throwing things out. See what we can transition. See what you don't really need on our journeys. The next thing you can do is throw away this complaint in mind. Look, dog, and packing again. How many times do they back? Should we do something about their dogs? You can't. You know, that's what dogs do. They back. That's their nature. So throw away on this complaining. It's finished now. You can stop backing dogs. Same as your husband. Sometimes you want to throw your husband away. That's what husbands are like. That's what they do. That's what squad do. That's what kids do. I was on there. Aircraft, many aircraft flying all over Indonesia, and they always have their kids. Ba ba ba. On the time in the aircraft, sometimes I think, can we not open the door and throw them out? But I can't do that. How I'm a combat man. But instead of throw the baby out, what you do 
is you throw your complaining out the window. Stop complaining. Let's go up that. So, I look at my mind, and I got this what we call foul finding, complaining mind. You know what that type of mind is. That's for fighting, complaining might and right you nerds. Know there always something from Buddhist society. There always something from with this place. Like today, we wish this didn't have the right here, and that's just not good enough. Is is not the right here next week. Then this separate resident. I'm not coming ever again. No, of course, you don't think like that, because that's just the complaining negative mind, and it doesn't get you anywhere. Even if you do get the right here. Someone will drink it before I get to it. So who cares? So the point is, just let go of your complaining mind throughout it all. Has that ever you got anywhere? You look at that complaining mind. It just drives you nuts and makes you a really terrible person to live with. So if nothing else, you can say I don't want this. Literally, throw it away. It's as easy to do as that. Just letting go of the negativity, letting go of all this stupid thinking we do. Not only the negative thinking, but even some of the positive. Thinking, can we think far too much, and that stops us getting any peace in life? Whenever you thinking about life, you cannot enjoy life. You just listening to the commentary. You reading a book about life. The thoughts and idea in your mind, you are not really. Enjoying the real things. That's why there this old smile is an old meditation story of Lao Tzu. Every evening he would go on a walk, and he chores once up his disciples. Only once could go on a walk with. The rich master. There's well a golden rules. If you went on a walk with a rich tourist master, you have to be white. You weren't allowed to speak. Not even once walked. Once day, this young man was go in. On the walk with the master, and they go to ride mountains at the sunset, and it was one of their amazing tourist senses. And the young monk could help himself but say, "Wow, what a beautiful sunset!" He broke the roof. Lao Tzu turned it around, went back. To the monastery was never allowed that young man to go on a walk ever again. The young man's friends pleaded for him, said, "Look, it was only one sense. Then give him a break, cut him some slack. What's the best deal anyway? Of keeping silent." And that's when the master said this very profound explanation. He said, "When that young man says, 'What a beautiful sunset,' he wasn't watching the sunset anymore. He was only watching the world. 
He wasn't watching the sunset. He was only watching the words. No, that's actually very deep. Every time you think, "What's a beautiful sunset?" You are not squatting anymore. You are watching the world, and so most of us, we just watch what. That's all. Our life is just what. It's the first from real life. We don't feel. We don't see. We don't hear. We just live. In squats, we think we hear what we think we see, what we think we know. It's a great thing to be able to throw out on that thinking, and you get a peaceful life as that. You don't have to do this all the time, just every now and again. Learn how to throw it out. I told a story a long time ago about my mother's mental self. She, an English woman, well, she's in a home now. She's very old, but in her house, like many English people, how they have a fireplace and a pool. The fireplace they have a mental self. And at that mental self, they keep the knick knack. The man mentors, the photograph, and on the thing with, which brings back happy memories. And so that's one day I had just been in a trailer for a few years. As I went to visit my mother, and so I bought her a gift. And what sort of gift to to do you, friends? Someone gave me a stuffed kangaroo. You know, a little fluffy toy, really cute. So I bought that bike. And gave it to my mother, and she liked it very much, and she put it on her master shelf. Next time I went over there, someone managed to get me a collar, and so I took that back. Uh, and she says, "Oh, it's so beautiful! Every time I see this, I can remember you in a trailer." So she put it on her mantel shelf next to the kangaroo. The next time, I managed to get a good kangaroo. The time I forward, I fly to birds, and the fifth time I went, I managed. To get a warm vest, the chest ball was the warm vest was so big. She tried to bust it on the mantel shelf, and on the other ones fell off. She spent about an hour trying to plant it on herself, and everything out fell off. I said. Why don't you throw down all the thing away? She said, "No, they are nice. They remind me of you. You had so much roast fish on that shelf." And I says, "Mother, this is like a person. They get one more thing in their heads. They has a nervous." Breast though, you meant to say having a nervous breast though. That's what happens. We collect so many doubt and so much stuff. So if that's where my mental self every time is, I got a kangaroo, 
I took a bus that's on everything else was pretty clear. The next time someone gets me something else, I throw that one away and get something new. So one thing at that at the time in your head, and then you meant her says inside your friends never ever has a nervous break. That's what I always do. I have all that job which I'm supposed to do, and I just been on this distant tour of Indonesia all over the place, and I also spiritual director of the Buddhist Society of Western Australia, a post of. Born in a girl, monetary looks after the non monetary of the Masara, spiritual advisor of the Buddhist society of Saw of Trina, spiritual advisor of patterns of whatever of the Buddhist society of Victoria, the director of West Buddha Dhamma in Sydney, spiritual pattern of Bodhisattva Meditation Center, Director of Brand and Education Center in Singapore, Spiritual Baton of Buddhist Fellowship in Singapore. What else am I doing? Oh yes, very chairman of the of a trainer center association. Feel all the things I miss out feel. What is this? I forget now. Anyway, I got on the job, but only do one at a time. So, when I shot off here in this building, I just put Buddhist Society of Western Australia on my mental self, and that's all I am. And as soon as I leave, I throw that way, and then I'm just teacher at the channel through meditation retreat center, and that's the only things on my mental self. And as soon as I leave that, and I go back body na yana monastery, I throw that away, and now I'm a bot of body na yana monastery. I just put. One thing on my mental self at the time. That's why you are sad and beautiful and happy. So throughout your way, and only keep one thing. The recent moments, what's happening now? That's become the first way of letting go, learning to throw things out. And stop keeping too much. Especially, don't keep the past or the future second way of letting go. It's just learning what freedom truly is. And this particular story is an anecdote. Once, once of our monks, once I was too busy doing on their other thing, we used. To go teaching in reason, but another monk started teaching in reason. When he started teaching in reason, this word is Kasurina reason, as one of the top security tell. After a while, the reasoners they said, "Can you stay back a bit longer?" We want to shock up, talk to you, just find out about you. So he stays, but a little bit longer. They gave him a cup of tea and some chocolates. Now, if you give a monk a cup of tea and chocolates, they gonna stay forever. So he stay behind for a bit of tea and chocolates. They started asking him questions about life in the Buddhist monastery. In the wet, what do you guys do? Have you ever wondered what we do in our monastery? So he said, "Okay, the day in the life of a monk. We get up at four o'clock. 
in the morning and just at that the restlessness were a gut for a clock in the morning even in prison you don't have to get up at that time and the monk he did actually make a qualification he said actually if a lunary is a pino getting up at four o'clock in the morning with it truth is a pino you can always get up earlier if you want to that's a a pino and then what do you do and he told them we meditate they said can you just watch the end of the late night movie he said no we don't have tvs you don't have tvs in the monastery we have tv in our cell in the prison that's terrible so what you do then you have your breakfast we do have a breakfast at the monastery we usually have just one cup of cereals in it and that's about it or you know someone you know has his noodles but it's only one cup that's all they says wow you know is kasurina tell we can have bacon we have banquets we can have cereals we have everything there whatever you want and they said why don't you do that in the monastery no no we only have a pit of cereals and dust and then what do you do in the morning and then we walk hard at bodhiyanas monastery we do this mass in church you know buildings and even i do this and if you go down to the retreat center we do in the ramp and i was spending two days cutting the brick it's where a hearse enters rinder really heavy monk getting myself and dusty i like some turning in went any congress work tell the story once with do in congress work when do when you do congress work even at a monk you guess it's on last on over you so you know just boy pin boys i'm still a boy you know still just maybe a bit old to be a boy but i still like getting myself all dirty so i got on this concrete on top of me as i was walking back to my hut to have a shower i passed a sri lanka sri lankan woman and she was in this really expensive sari she was visiting the monastery she came up to me and i will never forget this she said uh, i come to see a post achan pram i thought very quickly and i said madam if you go to the horn over there he probably be there in about 15 minutes that's way enough time for me to go to my room get a shower and get changed into some clean rough so i went up to the hall and as he was waiting and i said oh how much i chant from you know she never recognized me that's how dusty i was i gave her a night talk you know about the monastery and about buddhism 
what we're doing here, and she was really impressed. So just before she left, he said, "You know, you got a really good monetary. Are you a really good monk? But if I, if you don't mind me saying it, I sounded really dirty monk when I came here, and I." Think you should do something about that," I said. "Um, I talk to him later, Ma." Which I did.